of the, the weekend. weekend. Liv, I'm going to give you 15 seconds to name as many Chelsea summer signings as possible. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> There's too many. Um, Felix, uh, Neto, uh, Dewsbury Hall, uh, a guy called Philip Jorgensen. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, there's another guy called Amari Kellyman. Um, I don't know, there's too many. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? As you can see, we've got a really good show for you today. Uh, you'll understand why in a second. As coming up. Target practice is back as West Ham captain Jared Bowen tries to brew up a big score. Where is it believed that coffee plants were first cultivated? I think it's South America. OK. This might be really wrong. I'm going in. We spend three minutes with the Premier League's youngest ever manager. I think this step is, is a big step, and I'm really looking forward for the step. I'm a young man, but I'm not a young coach, so it's, it's a big experience and a big challenge for me. I'm looking forward. And JJ has got the member as the Welcome to the Weekend team took on our fantasy forfeit. Uh oh! oh, oh. I, I, I told you! I knew it was going to come in like her! I knew it! Look at this! Oh, I won't give too much away, but I'm so excited to watch us at the Velodrome. Uh, right, match week two in the Premier League is upon us. So let's remind ourselves of the fixtures that we've got going on. It's Brighton against Manchester United. That'd be a really good game. That's the early one in the Premier League. There's five games on at three o'clock. Villa Arsenal, we'll get to that in a second. What a big game that is, the 5.30 on Saturday, Bournemouth Newcastle. Now, this is the furthest distance between two Premier League clubs in miles. How far is it? 400, 386. He's going to base his answer on yours now. Three, three, <laughs> 388. Ah, oh, you went the wrong way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 350 miles between Bournemouth miles. and Newcastle. You've got Wolves, Chelsea and Liverpool, Brentford. They are the two other games on Sunday. But the biggest game of the weekend, no doubt, comes from Villa Park, Aston Villa against Arsenal. So it makes perfect sense to head up there now and speak to Io. Io, I mean, Villa did the double over you last season. I hate to Ooh, remind you. Shots fired already. Down the, down the stretch as well, where it really mattered, uh, uh, Arsenal. Uh, 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 <laughs> you're, you're throwing that out there so early, man. Do you know what's really weird as well? There's something personal for me. I'm an Arsenal fan who grew up in Birmingham. And I actually grew up not too far away from Villa Park. So that stung a lot. But yeah, man, Villa Park, second season, full season for Unai Emery. And actually, Villa are now in the Champions League, which is absolutely massive. So much is changing at this club at such a rapid rate, including their kit sponsor. You might remember there was a kit sponsor last season and they had issues around sweat and things like that. So they've now gone with Adidas and Adidas have got what feels like an indefinite or a, 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 a kit sponsorship that lasts for who knows how long but it's the very first time both brands have come together Aston Villa and Adidas and I think Adidas have got seven teams in the Premier League. Let's see if I can remember them. So, obviously, Aston Villa, Arsenal, Manchester United, Newcastle, Fulham, Leicester. And I think the final one is Nottingham Forest. Yes, I hope I'm right on that one. Mm. Anyway, let's talk about this new Villa kit. I want to know what you guys are thinking about this one. Look at this. Mens, I know you're the kit man. What do you reckon of this claret and blue one with a little uh, yellow badge as well on the, on the side? What are you saying? Yeah, any, anything Adidas make is the 7 out of 10 minimum. They're the best, they're the best, they're the best kit. But are you giving <laughs> that really? a 7 out of 10 or are you giving it more? I think I might give it a 7.7. 7. It's quite classic, it's just it's quite classic. Classic, classic. It's classic, classic Villa. Classic. There's nothing, there's nothing go, like... That's can't a classic. Go wrong with it. It's classic. Yeah. Classic, yeah. All right, what do you think of this? Talk, talk to me about the away kit now. What do you think of the away kit? We've got Konza at the back as well in this one. This is quite nice. Oh, I like that. I quite I like, like that. the white with the uh, light blue stripes as well. And also, you've Ooh, got that sort of I like claret that. I like that. and I like blue that. across the collar as well. That's a nice little detail. A bit retro as well, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's an 8.7. 8. As, 7. As, as, as a player, when I put on a white kit... You're a player, I, yeah? As a player, when I put on a white <laughs> kit, I feel I'm going to score. Mm, I hear that. Yeah. I feel like my mum's going to kill me for the washing. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't slide tackle. I don't, I don't slide tackle. But uh, we want you to stay there, right, because uh, we're going to do World in a Week now and right, we're going to look at the uh, Premier League right, team sure. of the season, all right? Um, mm -hmm. An interesting omission, 
uh, by the way. But let's have a look at first who's actually in the 11. Uh, the PFA team of the year is this. All right, cool. In goal, Arsenal's Raya. Fair? Yeah, fair, fair, yeah, fair, yeah, fair, yeah, yeah. fair, fair. Yeah? I don't think any oh, fair, keeper fair, had a fair. great, great season, but... They kept, yeah, yeah. OK. Pickford, maybe, but no. No? Nah. Kept the most... Uh, Carl oh, Walker, right, right back. actually. Carl Walker, enough. right back. Yeah, fair. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Uh, yeah. Now, this I, wasn't... I, I'm not, I wouldn't... I... You put in Reece James? Oh, OK. If there, was, if there was another right back in there, I don't think I would be opposed to it. Yeah. OK. But. Um, Virgil van Dijk, Gabriel and Saliba. Mm. Yeah, those yeah, three. You, yeah, those you three. Could, yeah. yeah. Arsenal's Arsenal best defensive record in the Premier League last season, for sure. Saliba yeah. and Gabriel have to be in. Yeah. So They've basically gone Saliba as a left-back, that's fine. Basically, yeah, we'll, fine, fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll have that. Rodri, Rice, and Odegaard. Now this is where this is where it's getting. Okay, let's do let's do the let's do the front three first, and then, <laughs> and, then, and, then and then we'll, we'll come to the conclusion as to. Okay, the front three: Foden, Harder, Harland, and Watkins. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna lie. Yet. I'm sorry. I'm happy with that team. Who, who would you put? Who would you put instead, Liv? Uh, how about the person that scored the most goals and assists in the Premier League last season, Cole Palmer? Yeah, Cole Palmer in, but I don't think he's in yeah, over the Yeah, but he did, think... he did pick up an award, though, didn't he? He got the Young Player of the Year. How yeah, could he be...? He should be in this team. He, he should, should be in the be PFA in team. team of the year. I think, I think time, got, man. I love Rice, time. and I think Rice had a good season, but I think you could swap him for um, Palmer stuff. If you, if I think you, Palmer has to be in the team. If you can yeah, change, think, not the formation... I don't, know, man, I don't know. I think he's got to graduate there. I think he's got to graduate. Ooh. Let me just stop there, Liv. Liv. Don't make this about Chelsea. Let me just yeah, when you're saying gra- when you're just saying when you're saying exactly. graduate there, yeah? Rice Rice wasn't in it last season or was he? Odegaard wasn't. There's a few yeah. players that have graduated there. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, this season or last so. season that Cole Palmer was a, the outstanding player in the Premier League. For the whole season. Mm. Mm. No, no, Foden was the best player in the Premier League. No, but as in, you could make a case. We were no, saying... Foden you could make, you a, could case make a case that Cole Palmer could have won player of the season. And I think if he had... I wouldn't have been surprised. No, you wouldn't have been surprised. So how on earth can he not mm. be in the 11 best players in the Premier League when he was arguably, probably number two, maybe, you could argue number one, but we'll go number two. So my Bill question Foden. to you, Liv, is who are you taking out? But I would take out, to be honest... Foden's got to go in there because he was the best player in the Premier League. Haaland won the yeah. Golden Boot. However, I still think it's more impressive what, what Palmer did in that so Chelsea take out, team. Uh, no, take out no, listen I'll to me. Check it, just check it. I would probably take out Watkins or Rice, even though Watkins had a brilliant season. I still think what Cole Palmer did in that Chelsea team. I was think Watkins, Watkins was... was fantastic last yeah. season. But so was Palmer. I mean, Watkins was fantastic, but also Declan. Yeah, but also Declan Rice added to his game from what we saw at West Ham. What did he Palmer assisting. do? He was taking the corners. I tell you what, I tell you what, there was, there was I tell you what. so much more to his game last season. What about anyway, that, maybe I'm biased. What about Palmer? Biased. He played four games for City and everyone was like, oh, I don't know about I this signing. But, but, bro, I can't <laughs> lie, though, yeah? 22 goals is crazy. And 11 and assists, assists. It's not bad, in a it? team that bad. struggled. It's let, struggled yeah. i tell you what I'll do there, Io. I changed the formation in the same way that they've put three centre-halves in there. I play two in the midfield. Yeah. I take out Rice. Yeah. I put Foden behind a front three <laughs> of Palmer, Watkins and Haaland. And Haaland. Yeah. That's my team. Cole Palmer, I've got a bone to pick with the PFA. Right. Get Cole Judge Palmer, JJ let's, in get there. let's just leave it down. Um, a, a few Man City players in there. One Manchester City player that I think would have made it had he still been playing for Manchester City. They've just signed, <laughs> re-signed. <laughs> oh, okay. I just, can we just go Gundogan. straight to Io on this, please? They've just signed Gundogan again. Is that, should we just give him the title now? Yeah, yeah it's well, not fair. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it gave me similar vibes I, I when Bruce right. Scholes came back. I think you're back. right. Gundogan's the G. But let's not... Let's not forget, though, Gundogan's coming back a year after. He's a year older. I don't know, man. He's got to be decent, but he's not going to be starting because there's no way Gundogan's going to replace Rodri. So where does he go? No, Kovacic. So let me just, let me just, Kovacic. Let me just remind you what happens, yeah? Pep brings him on with 15 minutes to go, like he did last game of the season against Aston Villa, and he changes it. I don't know if it's 15 minutes, but it's near the end of the game. I still think he starts. When you bring players like that off the bench, you're golden. Yeah, you're golden, you're golden. It feels like when Scholes came back um, a few years ago out of retirement and then Fer- they won the league again with Man- There he goes. That's, that was it. it. I think he just epit- I think he epitomizes what you need to win a title. It's fine margins. He's one of those players that pops up with big goals in big moments. He's played every single big game under Pep Guardiola. And I mean, he'll play me... every single big game this season as well. Can I, can I just say this as well? At two ends of the scale, Chelsea has signed everybody. Liverpool have signed nobody. And then Manchester City just go and go. We'll go and get that little gem. Yeah. 
Why couldn't we have signed him? That's this is what I mean. He City is such a well-run club in that sense. Like it, they very very rarely get transfers wrong. I mean, maybe Mateus Nunes and Calvin Phillips are the two, but you look at the signings, especially under yeah. Guardiola, yeah. for his whole time he's been at City, and they've got it spot on, and that's run. why they're one of the best-run clubs in Europe. Hi, my brother. We'll speak to you soon. Yeah, good to see you. And he uh, didn't cost yes, 100 million yes. either. <laughs> he was a free. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the hype that's been going on on Twitter about the new score bugs. Yeah. We've not seen, <laughs> have you not seen it? So yeah, we'll show you we what, what everyone's been going mad about it, but like they're just like these new animations of the score bugs when a team scores. So it's cool, like people are just going mad. Like someone said, honestly, Arsenal's one is the best, uh, looks great. No, from Forest one's nice. There's so many, so many good. So we're gonna pick our favourites. So here's the, here they are here. For me, the Arsenal one is clearly number one. I do like Arsenal. I like, I did like Brentford there on the first page. The little bees. That Manchester are City one is good as well. The bees, yeah, the blue moon, the bees that are buzzing around. Nottingham Forest one's quite cool. He's got an arrow, right? So um, that... bow and arrow, oh, uh, Robin Hood, that's Sherwood good. Forest. Wow, someone like you would know that. I've that's just watched, crazy. I've just watched OG. Chelsea's and I was like, what, the hell, what, what is that? Yeah, what's it's, Chelsea's it's, one? It's obviously a blue flag, isn't it? Is that it? Keep the blue no, flag. No, it's most probably a new signing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, what they, yeah that's what they put on there. <laughs> that's what they put on there. They couldn't afford anything else. <laughs> so they just put the flag in. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll go Brighton with Arsenal. There's Brighton's, so many. There's so Brighton's many good ones. Brighton's is good, yeah. Brighton's, Brighton's is nice to see you flying across. Yeah, that is That's good. a nice yeah. one. Brighton's one as well. All right, so cool. We picked out our six favourites. Yeah. Here, here they are, here they are, here they are, here they are, here they are. They're coming. They're coming. Don't worry, they're coming. Yeah. OK. So we've got United, we've got Newcastle, Brentford, Arsenal, City and uh, Nottingham Forest. So, guys, you can vote your favourite one on the QR code. Liv, you hear that? <laughs> QR code. Code, scan it. Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> yeah, you remember live last year. The key code. <laughs> you didn't know, you know what it is. But yeah, but literally scan that QR code and vote you who want. I expect Arsenal to win back to back episodes. Are you just trying to influence the. No, I'm just, I, I'm just saying what, I'm, what, I'm, what I expect. Yeah, don't try and influence the vote. OK, cool. But anyway, that's how you do it. Scan the QR code <laughs> on your screen. Uh, right, let's have a look at Brighton's, because we did actually mention it, didn't we, when we saw them all come up. This is pretty cool. Top left of your screen, we can see it anime. I quite Ooh, like the seagull. Yeah, the seagull see, was the nice. Seagull's the seagull's cool. The seagull was nice. Yeah, the seagull is cool. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. You look good when you do that, Jay. You look good when you do that. You'll yeah. do that. Just relax it. Relax yeah, quite, it from the shoulders quite through nice, the wrist. Isn't it? It feels good, it is yeah. actually, that feels really nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, that is the score. There's Man United, the, the old red devil. The I like that four. one. I, like, I did like that. It's scary. Which one, which one do you prefer out of the two? I like, I like the Man United one. It feels like, yeah, raw. they scored. <laughs> do you know what I mean? feel like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure we can have a look again at the score, because Brighton will be hoping they come out with a result like this on the weekend when they play Manchester Ooh. United, won't they? Especially head coach Fabian Hertzler. That was sick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm a young man, but I'm not a young coach. So I was born in the United States, in Houston, Texas. I grew up in Munich. So I would say that's my hometown. I spent most of my, my years there with uh, my family, with my friends. I started quite young when I was five years old in a small, small club where, where I lived in, in Munich. 11 years old, I moved to Bayern Munich and I spent it there about 10, 11 years. And then I played for the second team from TSG Offenheim and uh, then I moved back to Germany, to Munich, and I played for 8060 Munich. I, I made a tough decision because actually my, my dream was always to, to become a professional soccer player. But in the end, I decided 21, 22 to become a head coach because of the youth I had, the, the responsibility I get, the, the perspective I, I saw the game. Deep in my, my DNA, I always want to control the ball and dominate the game. I think it's, it's important not only to, to think in ball possession, it's also important to, to think out of ball possession. So um, the balance between defense stability and controlling, dominating the, go the game in ball possession is, is very important. Football is not a one-man show. 
you always need a big group, you need a, a good environment, a good atmosphere to work in because in the end we know that we spend an amount of time together, so maybe more than with the family. So I want to create an, an atmosphere, an environment where everyone wants to come here and, and enjoys the work. I think this step is, is a big step and I'm really looking forward for the step. I'm a young man, but I'm not a young coach, so I have 10 years, 9 years experience. It's, it's a big experience and a big challenge for me. I'm looking forward. All the games in, in the Premier League are something, something special because they're all really, really good coaches. They're the best coaches in the world, so for me it will be a great challenge to compete with them. But if you ask for one Premier League coach, I would say Guardiola. I love doing sports, paddle tennis, tennis, also volleyball. So I try to to do sports beside my job or my my work here. Be patient, be be humble, stay stay on the ground, and work hard and uh, find the passion. So when you find the passion. You will be, be happy in your job and you can do it your whole life. Uh, Brighton's boss, Fabian Hertzer. He was nine years old when James Milner, one of his players, made his Premier League debut. 31 is crazy to be in a, prem a Premier League manager. Yeah, the Premier, it's like, the Premier I can't League, believe it. The Premier League began six months earlier than when he was born, which is, meant, <laughs> which is actually crazy, like... when you, I mean, he's a, I'm a year younger than him. That is it's just, nuts. and you're... What, uh, and we've just got to say... How many years older than you and him? Uh, yeah. uh, what, you what can we... be his dad, you said. You could actually be his dad. I'm old enough to be his dad. Are you? Yeah, yeah. He's actually nearer to my daughter's age than my age. But anyway, it's very, uh, that's very anyway, impressive. Be, be, very impressive. We, we've just what got to say, well done to Brighton as well, because it's very bold, very brave appointment. They always, again, like we said about City, they are, Brighton are a very well-run club. Yeah, they always well seem to make the right decisions at the right time. And, and you know, this is a risk, because no-one really knew much about Fab Fabian Herzler, obviously being so, so young. Um, so, yeah, fair play. I mean, we will see how it sort of works out as sort of the Premier League goes on. But, I mean, as first games go, 3-0 against Everton could have been four away from home. It's a pretty solid start. He could, he could also have a very, very, very long career. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. He could have, like, yeah. a 50-year career. career. Yeah. 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 And I think right. he's going to win tomorrow as well. Ooh. My bold prediction of the weekend. Ooh. Brighton 2, Manchester United 1. And we didn't even ask for it, man. Yeah, we didn't even ask for it. <laughs> Giving it no, to you no anyway. Needed. Yeah, no need. OK, we're going to uh, continue with uh, World in a Week and what a debut for Amadou Anana. What a debut this is. Um, here he is scoring for his new club, Aston Villa. I really like Anana. I think this is a really good sign. Oh, good header. I mean... Beautiful. Bang. Powerful. No-one near him. He's obviously... And he's, like, how tall is Ooh. he? Well, yeah, huge, 20-something years old. And if you haven't seen the clip of him when they lost, Belgium lost to Slovakia, yes. when he's like, Andre ain't even my, my name, mate. mate. Because <laughs> someone, someone called him Andre instead of Amadou. And he is obviously Belgian. He can speak in a beautiful French accent. And he just turned into the most English person you've yeah, ever met. Yeah, uh, he sounded like he's from South London. It's honestly <laughs> so good. But how, how about that for a debut? And I think he can really excel at Aston Villa under Unai Emery as well. I very much rate as a coach. Let's go back to, to Villa Park now. Not okay, they're not Villa, we, might, so we might go back to Villa Park we'll to talk about... We'll go back at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, think, I think Aston Villa will be looking to kick on this season mm. now because, you know, after last year, they're in the Champions League now. Bit do you, do you, so do you think with the fixtures and that, it might be a bit much for them? They might drop in the league? What do you think? Do you think they keep the consistency? Maybe. It's the, the new format of the Champions League comes in, comes in this season, this doesn't season, it? Yeah, so yeah. we don't... If it was last season, I don't... I think I'm going to need to see how it actually works, works to yeah. sort of understand, but... Even though they've lost Douglas Louise, I think they've brought in Amadou Anana. I think it's not a like-for-like -like replacement. I think Douglas Louise is always going to be really difficult to replace, but they have brought in a brilliant player in Amadou Anana who does offer something different. 
I personally think, if Dan Bardell can hear me, uh, that Aston Villa are going to struggle um, in the Champions League and the league as well. Me and Dan did a little prediction thing. We're going to come to Villa Park in a second and I'll put Villa to finish sixth and he was not happy. Yeah, well, you shouldn't <laughs> Let's be go there now and he but, can argue it. But, but Dan's, uh, <laughs> Dan's there with Io and Talia. Uh, before we go anyway, uh, Dan, a quick word on your new signing. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to ask Liv if she remembers what happened last season when she was making bold, bold predictions uh, before we talk about Anana. But uh, yeah, he, you couldn't have asked for a better start from Anana, really, could you? He, I was a little bit worried about Douglas Louise not not being there. I think he offered so much output for Villa in terms of goals and assists last season. But then Villa's first set piece, Tillemans takes it, Anana buries it from close range, and it was just a brilliant performance. And that looked like it was the makings of a, another new great midfield partnership for, for Villa. So. Everyone already is, is loving him. I've seen lots of Anana shirts uh, around Birmingham. So, yeah, already on the way to becoming a fan's favourite. Yeah. See that? You're going to take that from him, Liv? You yeah, no, that? I, I'm going to give you context. Basically, last season, myself and Dan had a little... I, I basically said Chelsea would finish above Villa. Oh, and then Dan said Villa would finish above Chelsea. And so I did end up losing and I had to then pay my... My juice to, da yeah. okay. to Dan. So, um, yeah, I mean, this season I have got Chelsea finishing above <laughs> Oh, wow. But we haven't, we haven't said anything this time, so it's fine. Even if we don't, it's fine. <laughs> um, I, I'm just going to come back to you, uh, Dan. A bit. <laughs> uh, Dan, I know you, you're still yeah. alongside well, to let, ask... let, let's, let's carry this chat on. You, you guys can keep this beef going later on. Let, let's come to Talia here, a uh, big Arsenal fan, sports broadcaster. I mean, if you think about last season, uh, Aston Villa were a bit of the bogey team. Twice Arsenal lost them last season. Yeah, yeah. So what are you saying about this season? <laughs> I'm hoping we could do better. I, do, I think, you know what we have to say? Last season was the past. The past is in the past. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they were a bogey te a team last season. But like I said, the past is in the past. And I think this one, it's very, very different this season. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think it is about Unai Emery? He seems to have this hex over Mikel Arteta. It gets quite hairy with it between Arsenal uh, and Villa. I mean, if you think about the 1-0 the, the uh, win last season, uh, Kai Havertz disallowed goal. The juju gods are on your yeah. side. I mean, come on. Unai Emery does seem to almost seek revenge against Arsenal. I mean, completely the right decision. <laughs> that last season with Villa. I've never got a bad word to say about, about VAR. I think sometimes football just throws up these funny little stories, doesn't it? And Emery obviously has been associated with Arsenal in the past. I, I know he was very upset by the way things ended at Arsenal. Felt maybe he could have been given a, a little bit more time. But him leaving Arsenal has actually... It's both clubs have gained from that, haven't they? Because both clubs are in as, as good a place as they've probably ever been in. Now, obviously, Arsenal have had their, their famous history go, going unbeaten and winning a lot of trophies. But in, re in the recent past, Arsenal are now, I would class them as, a, as, a, as an elite team. So, Arsenal and Villa both in, in brilliant places now, both back in, in the Champions League. We obviously haven't been there for a, a, a very, very long time. But I, I don't think either club but set of fans would change their manager for anyone else in the world. I genuinely believe that. Yeah, I think you're spot on. Uh, Italia, let's start. Uh, let's talk about Arsenal and how they started this season. Very convincing. And, uh, you know, first game of the season is often a really good indication as to how the team want to start things off. It looks like a bit of a United front right now. I think that it's going to be a very good season, obviously, for many different reasons. But they've definitely come into the season strong. Uh, even with like the Emirates Cup, for instance, they've come into the season strong and they are definitely coming in with full force. It's, it's going to be a really interesting one to see. You think Arsenal still need a strike or do you think what we've got right now is absolutely spot on? Because it seems that it's not just the Kai Havertz who's scoring. You know, we're getting contributions for goals from all across the pitch. I think... I think at the end of the day, it can work either way. I think if Mikel Arteta wants that and that's what he'd like to happen with the team, then it's going to happen. But I think at the same time, not necessarily, and it doesn't have to, because the team are really united and they're doing very well. And we are this team which it's... it's, it's you never know when someone has a ball who's going to score because yeah. everyone seems to be able to score. You know, everyone across the entire um, pitch. Mm, OK, let's quickly on, on Villa start as well. I mean, a way match winning that against, you know, another Basque coach. Unai Emery is showing some serious intent this season. Yeah, and we're notoriously rubbish away at West Ham as well. I was a little bit worried going into that game. They've obviously had a, a busy transfer window. But if you watch the game back, we were brilliant in that first half. Could have been 2-3 up, con conceded an unfortunate penalty right on half-time. But we've got a resilience in, in there now. And I think we've become a bit of a bigger side now. Obviously, we've talked about Anana. He must be six, six foot five. Villa are a bit more of a physical side now. They've got that resilience. And the thing they've got now that they haven't had previously... 
they've got options from the bench and it was the three players that came on that combined to, to score the winner. So last season was absolutely brilliant, but I just think we've got a stronger squad this time round. OK, fantastic. Well, we'll be back with these two a little later on, talking about the battle of the Basque managers in the Premier League and also talking about the brand new Arsenal kit as well. We'll see you soon. Did, did, did they mention that Villa took all six points last season? <laughs> yeah. Hope, hopefully. Yeah. Hope Thank you so much, for JJ. JJ. No. no. Was gonna no. Do that. <laughs> anyway, guys, still to come on Welcome to the Weekend. We're in East London at both West Ham's training ground and the Velodrome. This Amazing. is mad, you know. Oh, my God. This is mad. I'm so scared. Can you tell me where it was? You won that game. It was in well, Prague. Right. But where's that on the map? <laughs> exactly. Well, yes, welcome back. Now, Tom Bully, what are you saying about the show so far, bro? Tom Bully has seen enough. He's off to beat the London traffic. Enough. Hopefully we can get it back in the second half of the show. Now, yeah. guys, do you not see this? You know how much troll, innit? Did you see the A1 trolling from the man, myth, the legend, Jamie Vardy? Oh. Unbelievable. Me, one Premier League, you, zero. zero. It's funny when it's not <laughs> against your team. I, I thoroughly enjoyed what that. What a legend, Jamie Vardy. Um, By the way, 103 Premier League goals after the age of 30. Yeah. I mean, a game that you scored in, with his Premier League title, like, why are you giving him stick? Yeah. Just leave him. Yeah. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Brilliant leave from him. Jamie Vardy. We love that, and I think the West Ham fans would have enjoyed that as well. Uh, and East London is our destination now for the first game of this season's target practice. OK, welcome back to another season of Target Practice here at West Ham United today. Jared Bowen joins me. You are going to be the first one of the season, Jared. So the good news is you are automatically going to the top of the league beautiful, to start the season. Beautiful. What you're going to have is you're going to have eight questions and you're going to take the yellow magnets and put it on the map as to where you think the answer might be. Now, the first few are going to be about yourself and West Ham. Last few, something a little bit more specific, which we'll get to, and the scores are as follows. So if you get the correct square, bang on, 100 points straight okay. in. One square out in like a circle of it, it's yeah. 50. Two squares, 25. If you're three squares out, no points. Uh, any more than that, you're going to get minus 25 points. We'll see how we go. So, uh, Jared, we'll start with uh, West Ham. Crystal Palace down the road at the weekend. Uh, two teams are actually going head-to-head -head for the second time in a month, but the pre-season match you played against them in the Stateside Cup, where was that played? That was Tampa. Where are we going? Um, it's over here somewhere. But... OK. What are we going for there? Is that on? Which one are you going K9. for? K9. K9. Great. Well, it was actually, the one you were looking for was M8 in Florida. Last season, Jared, you were West Ham's top scorer in the league. 16 goals to your name. But where is the birthplace of the player who was second to you in the squad? Oh, my God. Well, do you know who was second? No. Could be. Has a habit of sitting down quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I needed. Yeah, but I don't know this. Where do you where do you think it is? I don't know. <laughs> I know it's here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. You, you take your time, right? N seventeen. N seventeen. You're going for. You're in the right continent. That's a good start. But it was all fifteen. Two out again. Still 25. It's actually going to go here as well. Nima in guard. I was going here. On the old Gold Coast there, so... Now, uh, Jared, we're going we're gonna to dive into the past here. I found a picture on your Instagram of uh, when you were in your England top with your red mohawk. Oh, OK. Where was the Premier League player who had a red mohawk born? Do you know who it is? Freddie Lumber? Of course, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm going for there. G17. It in. It's in. It was I... 16. I think uh, they give me really hard words to do. The Vitsho, Sweden. Now, Jared, of course, you were responsible for one of the most famous goals in West Ham's recent history when the, the club beat Fiorentina to win the Europa Conference League in 2023. Can you tell me where it was that you won that game? I thought it was in well, Prague. But... Right, but where is that on the map? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> going here. Is that locked I -18, in? I-18, yeah. I-18. Well, it was... J16, Prague is right there. So, what was I, two out again? Uh, yeah, yeah, 25 again. Now, we've heard you're a bit of a coffee connoisseur, Jared. Okay. So, is it, is it starting the day? Coffee Coffee is like the. Yeah, the main coffee. Thing? I'd, I'd like my own um, 
like coffee and brunch shop. I think okay, that's yeah. one thing that I'd, I've always wanted. Well, we've actually got something that you could um, perhaps uh, put in there when um, when when, oh, when, you, when you eventually that. open it. That, that can go on the that's on nice, the top there. Yeah. There you go. Put me coffee in that in the morning. Yeah. Now. As you do, obviously know your stuff. We'll, we'll start off with you know your exotic blends. Where is it believed that coffee plants were first cultivated? I think it's South America. Okay. This might be really wrong. I'm going here. Q9. What is it like? G25 or something? It, it's 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 O18, and that is O18. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. O18 is there. What yeah. The, what's that? That's cafe Ethiopia. Yeah, you learn something new every you day. That's something. minus 25 points, I'm afraid. South America was, that's Your, what came straight first to my brain. Well, just, just keep, keep that in there, you know, because uh, we're moving on to South America now, saying so Brazil, it's one of the biggest coffee producers in the world, but where in Brazil is the most coffee produced? We're going here, R10. Ronaldinho, R10. Ronaldinho 10. Oh, it was R11, but you still won out. 50 points. Now, Starbucks is the world's biggest coffee chain, but where did that company originate? It's got to be America. I mean, I could probably say that it... Oh, oh right, where are you going, Bob? Where's that? J6. J6. It's not J6, it's, it's K4. J6 is... I think that's part of Canada. Oh, oh amazing. But, but you're actually looking for Seattle. Uh, OK, you'll be pleased to know this is the last one. I would like to know where the espresso machine originated. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to put the magnet there. Yep. And stick with it. You go K16. K16. I think this is really cruel, but unfortunately, the bit of Italy where it is, is K15, oh my Turin, God. in Italy. Oh, I thought it was Italy. Yeah, well, you know. But it's, I don't want to shout it out it's a in good case show. I was wrong again. It's Angelo Moriondo, the inventor. Yeah, You'll never forget that name now, will you? Look, it's a long season, yeah. and we'll see where we are at the end of this one. But uh, congratulations. First target practice of thank the you. season, Jared. Congratulations, man. Enjoy it. your mug. Don't forget Oh, that, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Kind of, that was hard, but 200 is not, mm. it's not good. It's not, it's not good enough for our it's a tough school. Yeah, it's no. a tough school from where Someone we're will from definitely there. beat that. They have to. They have, they have yeah, to. They, they have will. to. Yeah. Okay, guys, time for drip drop. Mm. Yeah? So the Brentford Palace, you know, this is my kind of thing. Brentford Palace game, the two managers both wore white polos on the touchline. Oh. So who wore it better? That's the first okay. that's the question. Let's see it. Let's see it. This is Oliver Glasner in the. It's got. Aye. The, the top button undone as well, you know? Yeah, it's quite tight on the arms. It's so as Frank. That feels like slightly baggier. Yeah. Slightly more comfortable. You feel what I'm saying? Both were wearing white on a touchline. Who wore it better? I'm, oh. going, with, I'm going with my gaffer. You know yeah, what? Yeah, I think I'm going Glasner as well. Come on, I, I, would, I would need to see the trousers <laughs> and shoes combination. I'm, I'm, I'm liking you. the colour. I'm I like liking the, the I tones. Like, yeah, I like the yeah. tones, bro. Yeah, very I hear neutral, that. very nudie. Yeah, yeah, nice. OK, uh, let's go back to Villa Park now. Uh, Io? Yes, here I am, man. Nice to see you guys. And talk about drip drop. Well, well, I'm going to introduce you to someone who has got pure drip. He's a menswear designer and creative director of Labrum London. There's a guy called Fode Dumboya. He's a good friend of mine, but also the person that designed this beautiful African-inspired Arsenal kit. Fode, what's going on, bro? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Yourself? Yeah, good to see you, man. I can see you're you're in in there in your in your design room right there. But I just want to talk to people about this kit, man, because it's been putting a smile on so many people's faces. And we spoke about it last week as one of my favourite kits of the season. How did the connection come between you, Adidas, and also Arsenal as well? Yeah, that's a good question, man. Um, to be honest, we've been we've been we've been working on some other stuff. So, and I think they. They wanted to tell a story about Africa or celebrating the Arsenal African fan base. And they thought the only person that can help us bring this to life was me. And I think that's when they reached out to me. <laughs> and for me, that brief was celebrating the Arsenal African fan base and past players. And these are people that I followed and watched um, in my youth days. So it was everything that I dream of. Yeah, I love to hear it, man. And that that's the thing. You know, imagine being a fan of a club, then actually you are going to be designing the kit for the club. And actually, Arsenal come to Aston Villa this weekend, and this is going to be the first time they wear this kit. But I also know they've worn it in pre-season as well. Talk me through what it was like for you to fly out to America to watch Arsenal wearing this kit live on the pitch as well. <laughs> yeah, it was, to be honest, it was electrifying, man. I couldn't, I can't express it how it was. Just seeing them run out on the pitch with it, 
and I was on pitch side. And I think I couldn't, I, I can't express it here because like that feeling, like I had this, my stomach was just like, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't express that. I just felt proud and I just felt proud of my team. I felt proud of Africa as a whole. And I just feel like this changes the perspective of the way people look at us. And it's just to celebrate that part of the world. Um, it, has, it hasn't happened before. So for a Premier League team like Arsenal to do that together with Adidas, and I feel like it, it, it was something special, man. And I don't think... It's the best thing yeah. I've ever. It's the best experience I've ever had uh, for a very, very long time. And I don't know. Yeah. How that was okay. Well, I, the rest of my life. I mean, yeah. yeah, I love that, man. You're Sierra Leonean of origin. I'm Nigerian of origin. And actually, I wanted you to talk our audience through the design of this kit because I don't think a lot of people realise that the colours you've used here are reminiscent of all the colours in the African flags across the continent. Yes, um, like I said, the, the, the brief was like, how do we bring this kit to celebrate Africa? So the, the, the stripes that you see there, the, the green, red and black is the Pan-African colours. Um, the reason why, why we thought that was important to be in this kit, because if you are celebrating Africa, the Arsenal African fan base, you need to go back to where it all started, like when our parents start having, um, uh, when African countries start having their independence and our parents migrate and move in search of greener pastures. So we want to take it to there. And then because sometimes you can't you can't go forward if you forget what the past looks like. So that's why we we for let's take it back to the 20s. That's why the zigzag insert that we created to fit in on those um on 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 the side that you look at it there or the um, that goes that goes down on the kit is basically representing um Africa and um, freedom of movement. Like I said, when, when African countries start having their independence, that's when our parents move, they migrate, they travel to this part of the world in search of greener pastures. So we wanted to take it back to that and bring that energy, that electric energy that you get from Africa. And I think that's what we wanted to bring on that kit. So when you see it, you feel the energy of it. And that's why we added those inserts in it to, to create that story and bring it to life. To be honest, um, everyone is claiming this kit Kenya is claiming this kit. And then I had to keep telling people that this is not a particular country. This is more about Africa. We have to look at it as Africa winning and then we're all winning. So, and, and I believe with the energy that's coming back from that continent, it will bless Arsenal to be able to bring the, 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 the Premier League back at the Emirate this year. It's, it's what I want to hear, man. If this kit makes Arsenal win the league this season, bro, job done. <laughs> Everyone in Africa, all the Arsenal fans around the world are loving this. Love, 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 bro. I know you've got to get back to work. I really appreciate your time. Nice one. Good to see you, bro. You too, man. Thank you, man. All the best. All right. All right. Nice one. Right, back to you guys in the studio, man. This is a nice kit, man. Real talk. I love it. Thank you very much. It does look good on him. I've got to be honest. He wears it well. He does wear it well. And thank you to Fode as well. Uh, now, you don't want to go anywhere because the brakes are off on the final part of Welcome to the Weekend. Go on, Liv. Go on, Liv. Go on, Liv. Go on, Liv. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Liv. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Nice. All right, here we go. Welcome back to the show. Uh, right, earlier we told you about the new Premier League animations for when your team scores a goal. These were the six favourites we picked out and we want you guys to vote for your favourite. Ment, what was your favourite again? Arsenal. Arsenal. I like Brighton. Brighton's not on there. Jay, what was yours? I did like Brighton. I don't mind the Newcastle one either. But Yeah, Toonami. Uh, all you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen right there. You've got 10 minutes left to do that so get your votes in now right it's time to head straight back to villa park a huge game the biggest game of the weekend aston villa against arsenal io back over to you come on you villa 
<laughs> 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 don't do that to me man come on Liv be nice be nice but you know what this is a really good opportunity to really talk about the, the Basque influence of managers and coaches in the Premier League and if many of you don't know the Basque region is in the north of Spain borderlining France and it's a, it's a country on its own it's actually called the Basque country and it's a bit like Catalonia where Barcelona is where it kind of rules itself it's got its own laws but also known to have one of the best education systems in the whole of Europe so perhaps that's why it turns out great players like As Aspilicueta or Nico Williams that we saw in the Euros or the five, the four managers we've currently got in the Premier League. It could have been five with Xabi Alonso, but so many people are scratching their heads as to why on earth these back managers and coaches are so good and triumphing at such great clubs. Well, here's what Mikel Arteta had to say. The food. We have the best food in the world. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have the, the best restaurant by square meter and the most beautiful city. And it has to be linked to that, you know, what we eat and the way we live, the quality of life in, in our cities is incredible. That's quite interesting, actually. The quality of life and the food, eh? I bet tell you what, a bit of sunshine, a bit of olive oil, all that love, lovely stuff will be quite good. But let me just look at the, the current managers in the Premier League. Unai Emery have mentioned, Mikel Arteta, obviously, and Donny Iraiola at Bournemouth, and also Julian Lopetegui as well, you know, at West Ham. This is a, a Basque battle in the Premier League. But let's start with you, uh, Talia. I was just thinking about Unai Emery when he came to, to Arsenal. A lot of people might see that as not the greatest spell, but, I mean, taking over Arsene Wenger, that's never going to be easy, is it? No, never. And that's that's kind of what happened. I think coming in as, after Arsene Wenger is huge boots to mm. fill. And I think anyone that would have come in after him, it would have been a difficult job because, I'll be honest, you know, Unai Emery is a fantastic manager, mm. but coming in after Wenger is 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 just is what happened. Yeah, it really is, but then he comes to Aston Villa and we look at what he's done here. It's fair to say that he's almost found his fear, a club that have really looked after him and are really offering him all the facilities he needs to be a successful manager. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, you have lots of sporting directors and directors of football and people in different jobs at football clubs, but if you look at the teams that are doing well at the moment and you put Arsenal and Villa in that the managers are just completely backed and given everything that, that, that they want. It's almost a little bit old school because that's how, how football used to be. If you think back to Sir Alex Ferguson at, at, at Manchester United. But Emery has come here and rebuilt a football club and kind of rebuilt himself mm. as well. He was desperate to come back to, to the Premier League and prove everyone wrong who kind of belittled him mm. when he was at Arsenal. And you know, I'm not trying to take anything away from Arteta, but there is things that have happened at Arsenal that the building blocks were put in place by Emery. I'm, I'm pretty sure he gave Saka his, his debut, who's now one of the best players in the world. So, Mill Smith Rowe as well. Yeah, so, so Emery did a lot of good at Arsenal as well. It was just always going to be difficult to, mm. to follow Arsene Wenger, but he has been... Absolutely brilliant here. From 17th to Champions League football in 18 months is incredible. Yeah, we're, we're thinking about, and it's a discussion we had, uh, you know, in the studio in terms of, you know, who is the most successful Basque manager. It's hard to say because Unai Emery is the most successful Europa League coach out there. But Mikel Arteta seems to be coming with his own little arsenal as well. But Mikel Arteta is still very early on in, in, you know, manager, you know, history at the moment. He's very early on and being one of the youngest managers as well, having one of the youngest squads, you can see over the last few years, it's been, a, it's been almost like a warm-up of the last mm. few seasons and it, he's really come into his own now. I mean, he obviously did come in and he got us a trophy, um, but... He is coming into his own and he really has and he's really showing now what he's doing at Arsenal and it's really making a difference. Yeah, it really is. Well, I'll tell you what, very, very quickly, a uh, quick one, the top four, put them in order, Dan, of the Basque managers in the league. You've got Unai Emery, Mikel Arteta, Iraola, Lopetegui, top four. I'll go Lopetegui in fourth, Iriola in third. I really enjoyed Bournemouth last season. I thought he did a brilliant job. I have to go Emery one, don't okay. know. He, he's won the trophies, like you said. That's the only barometer I, I can go by. And seeing firsthand what he's done here, I'm, I'm never going to choose anyone else. But the two of them are, are both doing unbelievable jobs at their football clubs, Emery and Arteta. I love that, I love that. Well, as Mikel Arteta said, that the food is the one. So you guys, you get a taste. Bring it in, bring it in, Dan. You get to taste a, t a little bit of the Basque Country cheesecake. I can't have it because I'm lactose intolerant. So you just enjoy it for me, yeah? What does it taste like? Go on. It's not cheesecake, really. <laughs> Tastes like winning the league. <laughs> you see that? The taste of victory. Back to you lot in the studio. Ooh, I mean, wearing that shirt, how would she know what victory tastes like? Oh, again? oh my God! That is also a 
so, that is such a Dan Bardell comment. What, what does it taste like? Well, it just tastes like cheese. Exactly. Well done, Dan. <laughs> right. Uh, last season, <laughs> we played a game I love it. called I love Fantasy it. Hattrick, uh, where we got uh, points from three players we selected each weekend. I won. Worst game mm -hmm. ever. And because of that, I got to set a challenge for the whole team. So here it is. Over to me. <laughs> <laughs> So today we are at the Lee Valley Velodrome in East London, a building made famous at London's 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Now, let me tell you, legends were made in this building, and today another one will be made. It's not going to be you. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's optimistic to think any of us are going to be legends on that, brother. I'm a, I'm Why are we here, though, man? We are here. This is our forfeit. Ugh. Right. I'm actually glad we're doing this, but I am still a little bit petrified. Yeah. Let's go and have a look inside. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go. Ugh. You're not looking forward to it? Oh, man. You ready? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> oh, my. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Are you sure? serious? You why can't be it, serious. Why is it so high? Like, here? It's too high, it's too high. This can't be legal for novices. I knew it! Look at this! Do I have to wear a helmet as well? What do you mean, do you have to wear a helmet? Yeah. Should we go and meet the coach? OK, we've now been kitted out. As you can see, we've all got our bikes, our machines for the day. Some of us are dressed appropriately, <laughs> some not so much. Uh, but here's Andrew, our coach. Tell us a little bit about exactly what we've got to do today, please. So, to start with, we'll get you through the basics of how these bikes work. Little, give you a little bit of time to practice, get used to riding them. Then towards the end of the session, we're going to pop your names up on the big screens like you would at the Olympics <laughs> and uh, have you do a flying lap and see who can uh, get the fastest so time. So this is a proper well, time so trial. You shouldn't count yeah. you think this is your thing, so really it should be between us three. Yes, it's gold, yeah, it's us three. gold, <laughs> silver, bronze. Yeah, coach. yeah, coach. coach. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, you spotting any major differences between these and your normal bikes? No brakes. No, brakes. no gears. The pedals are going, the wheels are going, the wheels are going, the pedals are going. If you stop pedalling, the wheels will stop. No exceptions. So. Are we all reasonably happy? Yeah, I think Ready so. Ready to go? So, check over the shoulder, yeah. big pull on the fence, yeah. and start to pedal. <laughs> when you're ready. Go on, men. Ah. Try not to run the cameras over. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This Maybe. is mad, you know. Oh, my God. This is mad. I'm so scared. Oh. Close, close, close. <laughs> yeah, it's Easy. different, though. How was that for you, man? How was it, bro? You good? <laughs> Son, how did you find that, Liv? So hard. My arms are hurting. My legs are shaking. Your arms are hurting? My hands are hurting. Are you pedaling with your hands? <laughs> I don't know. I thought I was gripping the bike too tight because I'm so scared. So, nice and simple. That's the start-finish line. Once you cross that, the time started. Really simple at that point. Wow. As fast as you can. So you just follow it around the black? Back to that the line. The black line. You stay yes. on the black line? Ideally. OK. Io, you're up first. Oh, you can't do this. Yes! Yes! Ah! Set the pace. Let's go. Go on, Io. Go on, Io. Oh, my God, he's going so quickly. Keep it going, bro. That's really quick. Oh, I smashed it. Smashed it. Go on, Isle. That's Go it. On. Keep pedaling. Go keep on, pedaling, finish. Strong pedaling, finish. Pedaling, Strong finish. Yeah. yeah! Yes! I'm all right. Oh, my God, I'm actually really nervous. I reckon you could beat that, Liv. Come on, Liv. Go 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 Oh, 
man, that was good. That was good. Oh so clean. Life. I told you she was clean. She'd be happy That's with good. that. That's She'd good. be happy with that. Here we go. Go on, then. Go on, Here we go, son. All right, black line. Let's go. Got it. He's 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 got